Welcome back to One Piece Anime Re-Review Part 39. Yes, Part 39. Even though the main series is already almost 200 anime episodes in. <laughs> yep, this one discussing episodes 668 to 680. There actually are two major plot threads wrapped up with this one. And basically these start two, two, one, two new ones. And they're big, humongous ones. Okay, now they kind of basically wrap up one plot. Now, there's many different things going on here. Take, for example, Luffy, Violet, and Zoro, where they basically are on the way to go find Doflamingo. And they come across a brand new character, Pika! Who was heard was a rock man because he moves rocks. Basically, he gets to basically move the palace itself, and they show him. And they should actually show a little more detail of the flashback in these seven episodes. Mm -hmm. Well, basically, it's stuff leading up to the the terrible night. War focuses on Kratos, the man who was turned into soldier. It kind of, in a way, expands upon some stuff where. Basically, you had him when he was younger, when he was bit, when he was a murderer, when he basically when he was 15. He meets the king for the first time, and he basically sends him to the Gladiator Arena. And at one point, he got 100 victories and still stayed. He stayed in the arena for almost 10 years, racking up 3,000 victories. He didn't kill anybody in the arena, and I like the way it was basically the way it is currently. The way it's currently presented. After 3,000 victories, he was allowed to join the guard. He, he, Well, he basically joined the guard because, well, he had nothing else to prove. In his final match, he fought the king himself, who wore under the name Ricky and wore a helmet. Hmm, that sounds very familiar. Kind of like what he did currently. The whole difference is with that one. He was on the cover just to get one guy out. He wanted the cover because he basically wanted to find a way to take down Del Domingo. And we kind of see how he was turned into a toy... And also the fact that what also revealed how in the war he lost his leg. Yeah, he got apparently got trapped in a sea prism stone, which even not even he points out though that the, he doesn't have a duper power. Why in the world put him a sea prism stone makes no freaking sense. So in order to free himself, he chopped off his own leg. Yeah, he did this himself. And then just before he can hit Dol Dolphmingo, he gets transformed into a toy. Basically a soldier. And then he takes the king. Run jumps out the window, and the king himself goes into hiding. Do he feels his name is Kratos? He's like, the name doesn't ring a bell. Well, basically, this is kind of an explanation of of sugars, basically death fruit power, the hobby hobby fruit that basically turns people into toys. That also apparently alters people's memories. If you ever turn into a toy, people forget about them. Kratos was a big, huge one. Wow, yes, he was a big one when he turned into a toy. I mean, they turned various people into toys. They see You see it over the course of time. And here, you do get a chance to see it a little bit. Where I think it was... Well, who was it? Yeah, I think it was... Well, it wasn't Cavish. It may have been Cavish. When he got... It wasn't Cavish. It was actually one of their people. Who basically has hand touched on the leg by Sugar. Transforming into a toy... And put on a contract like you will harm the members of the family, you go to work, stuff like that. Oh, and by the way, the whole thing of basically the SOP, the knockout sugar, now with this special, like, spicy grape, which they try. First, they try taking him out, basically having Leo run up and try to put it in her grape bowl. At that point, when you travel is there. Turns out Robin stopped him. The reason? Because when he arrived, Travel uh, killed a fly with his power right between the eyes. So, basically he had Robin in disguise. They got disguised in the last batch of episodes. So basically you lie about, well, that there's one of the captains one of the Price and he want to talk to Turbo himself. He's like, okay, you want to talk to me? Fine. We'll go there right now. Oh, yeah, and also, at the same time, the Hornet group are basically trying to take out some of the people who are there. Bless you! 
They're welcome. And basically, so they try multiple times to take money. You know, Travel basically finds out, and basically he sends a humongous ship with a duck on it to wreck the executive tower. Just cause, cause he's an idiot. So at the multiple attacks on the troubles, Usopp briefly runs away. Then he comes back. He also sheds his disguise, and he feels, oh yeah, he lied about being a hero. He's a coward. Maybe he's a pirate. But the troubles basically don't care about that. They basically, despite the fact he did lie, they don't have a problem with it at all. And after being attacked multiple times by Tarbol, getting tied up, him basically getting beat up and his nose broken like usual. And then Sugar's like, you want me to eat this thing so bad? Here, you eat it. And then he swallows it. And then he basically starts breathing out fire and scaring uh, Sugar. Would apparently God's her going go to shock. And then she gets knocked unconscious. And then the best thing, that one of the best things that happens in this arc, all the toys transform back into humans. Oh yeah, and by the way, just prior to this, Sugar turned Nico Robin into a toy. Turned into a freaking doll, which caused Usopp and Luffy to forget about her. Unknown if, in fact, Zoro was affected by this, or anybody else part of the Straw Hats. I mean, there's no mention of it at all, which... Yeah, I mean, in the case of Luffy, he basically kind of forgot about her, and then when she was transformed back, oh yeah, I remember Robin now. And then they transformed everybody back. They saved Soldier for last, and they transform right in front of Doflamingo, who's got the king and Truffle Law in his room. And everyone's like, oh crap, it's Kratos. He's like, you again. And you have... Basically, these people affected by Kratos' return to be trans human. Basically, Violet, King Riku, and Kratos' own daughter, Rebecca. Yep. Oh, the new show in the flashback when Scarlet was shot. She died in his arms. They actually show that here. And according to Kratos, the one thing he hated about being a toy was not holding, was basically ha feeling the war from his, of his wife before she died. So, she died while he was still a toy. So, and of course, nobody's ever pointed out, though, that Rebecca is spinning over her mother. You know, I think the only difference between the two of them is that I think Rebecca's got a different hair color than her mother. Because I think Scarlet was basically a redhead. And I think that, well, I think that in the case of Rebecca, I think she was like a reddish hair. And... And then Sabo was like, yeah, time to wrap this up. So he basically grabs the fighting fish. They actually had the final battle take place here. And then he breaks the arena, grabs the fighting fish, and the hero's like, oh, we, 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 we were not going to hand it out anyways. And, and Sabo's like, I don't care. He rips open the treasure chest, picks up, he grabs the, the fruit which is in the air, eats it, and then he swallows like, blah. <laughs> Because the fruit, the devil fruit itself in the series is described to be very disgusting, but they eat it anyways. And he use and he basically, while smashing up the arena, he picks up Rebecca and has Bafami, but just basically pick up yourself, you're a pirate, aren't you? And basically carries on Rebecca for a little while, and then he smashes the through the arena, which causes the flagman and Burgess to fall right through. And apparently the Flagman doesn't care about Burgess at all. I mean, yeah, they both work for different emperors in a way. In the case of Burgess, he works for Blackbeard. In the case of Flagman, he works Dolph Mingo. Dolph Mingo is a subordinate of Kaido. Yeah, also, it was also revealed that thanks to Burgess's shockwave elbow, yes, his elbow across humongous shockwaves, causing humongous damage to the arena, and, well... Also, when the toys trying to turn back to normal, apparently one of the toys was actually the giant that Luffy fought. I think his name was Hanjo, I think his name is. And, well, Usep still being wounded. He basically proclaims him a god because he got the violin in front of him. And he's like, okay. Everybody's like, tell us what to do. What What, what, what is your command? And he's like, destroy this factory behind me and free, 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 free our little friends. And they're like, sure, we'll take care of that, no problem. Okay, and of course you have Koala making her making her return. Of course, Hack was turned into a toy, and then he turns back to normal. 
It's interesting though that Bartholomew was the only one not turned into a toy. Out of all the gladiators, the only ones not turned into a toy, aside from of course were Luffy, was Rebecca, Bartholomew, and Burgess. They were the only ones who weren't. Burgess I get because I highly doubt that they want to make well Blackbeard angry by basically turning one of his own subordinates into a toy. Especially since Burgess is one of the most well-known members of the Blackbeard Pirates. So it's good he didn't transform into a toy. Oh, and by the way, does he care about helping out Dopamingo? No, he doesn't freaking care. He basically sits in the sidelines the whole time. <laughs> yep. And also, the flag Mary reveals to Rebecca before all the craze have happened. It's like, he was like, hey, Rebecca, I have something to tell you. I killed your mother. That's just paraphrasing what he said. And she is shocked to hear, of course, my time is protecting her with his barrier. With his barrier. And she, he's like, well, my barrier can protect you from physical attacks, but not from verbal attacks. And according to Flashback, he wasn't lying. He did. He was the one who shot Scarlet. Why he shot Scarlet? Possibly because he wanted to eliminate the Riku line. He probably was ordered to kill her anyway, despite what, what, what was going on with the palace. And the reason why that, well, <laughs> Kratos attacked Dolphamingo, not because he wanted to kill the king. Not that. Because he wanted to kill his wife and child. Which, I don't think Riku, from what I can tell, despite that he was not exactly having an expression. He was not exactly worried about seeing, well, Kratos seeing him die. He was more worried about his daughter and, grand and his granddaughter dying than that. Which, I'm sure from his perspective, is probably... A little more reasonable to see him die than his own offspring. Yep. Let's see what else. Oh yeah, and Hack is embarrassed by his little arm bandage, despite the fact it was it was actually Bartholomew who did it. Yeah, and during the match, he's. I remember, like I think it was not in the previous batch episodes, but two batches back, where he won his match basically because everybody nobody liked the guy so much. I mean, he was probably hated as much as Rebecca. So he decided to take a pee break during the middle of the match. And I'm like, dude, you should at least wash your freaking hands after you, after you do that. He's very as a cannibal. And then when they all get underground, like, he basically is there, no problem. And basically, Koala gives Saba back his clothes. And then, of course, while Robin sees him, he's like, oh. And. Koala is basically reunited with Rob, basically hugging and basically almost burying her face in Robin's chest, which Robin doesn't have a problem with at all. And of course, well, with some of these medical attention. And, well, and of course, Rebecca's like, Who are you guys, anyways? And he's just like, Why? My name is Sabo. And I'm the man who you call Lu Lu Lucy. I'm his, I'm his big brother. <laughs> yep, and of course, there's a bit of flashback to post war stuff. When Sabo would drink from the sake cup, become his official brother, anyways. And they was reported of Mingo, like before all the stuff in the palace. That this is just after the toys back, and everyone's like, Yeah, before an oh crap, the revolution army's here. Why are they here in Dressrosa? To stop the supply of weapons. Which is what the Heppel army was doing, was here for, too. Yeah, they were here for pretty much the same reason. I'm surprised they didn't team with each other. Yep. And, of course, they plan the next move. Of course, Usopp's definitely going to get medical attention after this. And, meanwhile, though, we have Kinemon. Well, he fi figures out where Kondro is, thanks to disguise himself as Dopamingo. Yes, a very terrible look in disguise. And, of course, one of... I think it's Pac... I think it's... I don't remember the guy's name. He looks like... He's, like, covered head to toe, and he's... I think it's, like, a, he's basically a puff man. Well, he caused him to explode. Basically, by touching them. Also, Leo G gets a little bit of action here. He beats up Soldier, and that's it. He does very little. He pops up for like one, like one episode. I think it's actually two episodes, and that's it. The other guy popped up for a few episodes, but he didn't do very much at all. No, he didn't. Baby Five pops up here along Buffalo. Baby Five does a little bit during the last couple episodes of this batch. Same Buffalo, but. They don't do very much as I have for getting beaten by Kratos. Well, Kratos doesn't do much anything to Baby Five. He nearly breaks Buffalo's neck while basically trying to twist him. And then first thing he does when he gets in the room, he chops Dolphamingo's head. 
and everybody thinks Dolph Mingo's dead. And it turns out, nope, he's not dead because this is a string clone. Yep, a string clone created by Dolph Mingo. And, well, then he unleashes something that he, that Trout Barker Law is basically nervous at. The birdcage. You might be thinking, the birdcage. What the heck is that? It's basically a very, it's a very dangerous attack done by Dolph Mingo. Where he uses Marianne to shoot a bunch of humongous string to cover the entire island. And what this thing does? Like, it's basically like, think of it as basically like, like, have your fingers like this and just scratching across, crushing stuff. And also slicing up stuff too. It's basically like taking a hoe and just shoving it like backwards. That's pretty much what this thing does. And Dress Rosa is not the same even after this whole thing happened. Of course, that this particular plot for the birdcage, this lasts for a majority of the rest of the episodes. Kind of the same thing in the case of Sabo stuff. Yep. Frankie gets a little bit of action here, which is great. Though he basically gets, he runs into Delfinger, the big chubby guy, I remember his name, and Senor Pink, where he has a pretty good battle with him. Senor Pink is actually like, and of course, well, Senor Pink, well, is telling the girls, hey, just knock it off. It's his style anyways. He has no problem with Frankie being a cyborg. And Frankie, from what I could tell, like, oh yeah, he says, oh yeah, it, 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 for him, he says, Frankie, the reason why he's a cyborg is a lifestyle choice. Well, the reason for Frankie, the reason why he's like, because he got run out by a freaking train, and this was the only way he could do, do, the only thing he could think of, basically, to save himself by making himself into a freaking cyborg, making all of his parts cybernetic, except for his back. That's the only thing that's not cybernetic. Even though that his groin basically acts normally. Yeah, because... He once I got grabbed by Nika Robin, and he actually can feel pain. So, this not being a cyborg, I'm like, what part of him isn't? Because it seems as though most of his whole body is cybernetic. I'd say probably aside from his back, I'd say there's some other parts here. And there. I'm sure his legs are probably not cybernetic. Well, probably not entirely anyways. Yep. Though, he does briefly fight them, and he gets crappy out of him by... The Navy, yes, the Navy gets briefly involved in this batch. And, well, they shoot up Frankie, and then, well, the, the transformation starts, which affects the whole island, transform everybody back to normal. And the woman's like, yeah, it's like, everyone's back to normal. Remember, like, oh crap, I remember, I already have a boyfriend. Bye. <laughs> yep. I think this was the same woman from previously, I think it was. Mm hmm. Yeah, I also had where this dog was hanging out with this little girl. Turns out this dog was actually her father all along. And then, of course, we had this thing where every turn of toys runs into people who basically oppressed him when we were toys. Hey, he's like, hey, I, I remember you. You beat me up when I was a dog. Punch. Yep. And all of the pi pirates, there are pi apparently people turn toys. Or apparently, get this, not only pirates, but also government officials, marines, citizens of Dress Rosa, even freaking animals like a gorilla, a snake, an elephant, <laughs> even a freaking tiger. I'm like, what the heck? Like, sugar. I'm sure you probably want to cover up the whole thing of basically turning other people to toys. But why the heck do you turn animals into toys? This makes no frickin' sense at all. I'm sure that, as far as I can tell, there's no explanation for this at all. Yeah, and of course all crazy stuff happens. And never gets back with the parasite string. With the exception of the Admiral. Yeah, because he's able to hear it coming. Even though he's blind, he's got a good sense of hearing. And he stops it just before he reaches his neck. He's like, hmm, I wonder what this is. Of course, he tosses away. He's probably the only Navy officer, aside from the big bulk guy who apparently can't remember stuff, who actually is not affected by all this. Mm -hmm. Yep, what else? Let's see. Oh, yeah. The the case of the, well, the birdcage, it springs up from the string clone and goes around the whole island. And Pika moves the palace to the Flower Hill, which remains for pretty much the rest of the series. Mm hmm. Yep. Also, well, Zoro tries to fight Pika, but he basically is having a tough time with him. 
and his fire peak at even on starts here. Wow, this is by far the longest fight of this whole arc. This this fight takes up a good like if I remember, I think it took about 30 episodes originally. Yeah, 30 episodes. Like, I would say a good chunk of this arc is basically Zora versus Pika. In the case of Louis versus Delphmingo, fighting-wise, well, it started here, then had to stop because, well, they started the whole thing of like, okay, let's play a game, a killing game. What One of your one of your targets is me personally. You could assassinate me. Kill me, you win. Plus, basically, you got... Or, you can kill these other people and bring your dead bodies to me. Who these people are, they don't say the next episode. Yeah. Though, one of them in real the title is that Usep. And he's worth 500 million berries. This is why his bounty is not that freaking high. Yeah, his bounty never goes that high in the series. But, it was probably just a joke because they think he's that important. He's more important than freaking Luffy. <laughs> okay, yeah. But that was quite hilarious. But this was a great batch of episodes. And I can't wait for the next batch. This batch was only released just two days ago. I'm sure that the next batch is going to release next month. Possibly. Yep. But yeah, that's particularly it for this particular review. I have a few more videos I'm going to do. Now, you're probably thinking, why didn't I review 7 Days Sins yesterday? Well, there's a good reason for that. Because it's like I normally be watching this show... Didn't upload the episode yesterday. So I watched on YouTube with the subbing calling these people by the wrong names. The site I go to seems more like a professional, even though they're not Netflix per se, I'm not going to say what side it is, but they are very professional in how they do the subbing. And they get everything right when it comes to subbing, which I do appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And expect to review that soon per se. And maybe I'll, maybe I'll get time to do Dr. Stone with Tessuka Tuppets. If not, well, in the case of Dr. Stone, that might happen tonight. With Tessuka Tuppets, that probably won't happen until tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Along with reviews for Yoshima Half the Princess and Fire Force. Yep. So, until you see you all a little bit later, for my review of the 7 Days 10. Okay, to the next video. Bye.